So this video is going to focus on like calculations, but a second um, equation that you're going to need to know. So this is related to, again, when uh, scientists were experimenting with light and interacting with an atom, they started to see that the light that would come out after the energy went in had different colors. And so there needed to be some kind of explanation of why the light that was coming out was a different color, if it was in the visible range, or why it was a different radiation. So we have a, a scientist called Planck who came up with a mathematical formula to explain why we see the colors that we do or why we see the light that we do. So he was able to figure out that energy is absorbed or emitted. So again, absorbed means going in, emitted means coming out, is proportional, okay, keyword there, proportional to the frequency of the radiation. So again, we've been doing lots of proportions. Uh, this is a pretty straightforward calculation, but understand that energy is related to frequency. Energy is related to frequency. So he came up with this uh, very simple equation. Energy, E, is equal to H, Planck's constant, times nu. Okay, so that's multiplication sign. So sometimes you see it written as E is equal to H nu. Okay, H nu. So energy is going to be in something called a joule. That's going to be an energy unit that we're going to be using for this calculation. H is called Planck's constant because he came up with the uh, relationship. It is 6.6262, but it goes beyond that. So we don't use it for sig figs. Times 10 to the negative 34th joule seconds, uh, because again, you're multiplying a joule times um, frequency, which frequency is, of course, um, inverse seconds or you could write it this way or it's a hertz, okay? But usually inverse seconds, at least easier for students to see where the units all fit in, where the units all fit in. So with this calculation, I'm gonna show you a couple examples. What is the amount of energy found in light with a frequency of 1.9 times 10 to the 14th hertz? So again, energy is gonna be Planck's constant times frequency, okay? So you're just taking Planck's constant that will be given to you and you're gonna multiply it by the frequency in Hertz. Again, you're just gonna have to pay attention to that power of 10 and making sure you're putting it correctly in your calculator. So again, pause the video and see if you could get an answer for the amount of energy. So again, we have energy is equal to Planck's constant times frequency. So I'm gonna take 6.6262 times 10 to the negative 30, 34th joule seconds um, and multiply it by 1.9 times 10 to the 14th. So again, this is where your power, or excuse me, your double E function on your calculator is gonna be very helpful. So take 6.6262, second function E negative 34, and then multiply it by, my 1.9, 1.9, second function E, 14. And it should give you uh, 1.3 approximately times 10 to the negative 19, okay? And the energy is going to be in joules. Energy is going to be in joules. So another way you're going to see this problem is if you're asked to find the frequency if you're given the energy. So again, similar to the other calculation, um, you're always gonna have Planck's constant. That's a constant, so that's not gonna change. So the only thing that's gonna change is are you solving for energy or are you solving for the frequencies? But in this case, you're solving for the frequency. So you have to pay attention to the units, okay? So I'm giving the units of joules, so that means that's energy. This is Planck's constant, so this will be your X. That will be your X. So again, try to do this problem, pause the video, and see if you get my answer. All right, so you should get 1.48, three sig figs there, times 10 to the 12th hertz. Again, it could be an inverse seconds, um, is, is, is the same exact thing. So what you do in your calculator is take 9.82, so that's your energy, E to the negative 22, okay? And divide it by Planck's constant. So 6.6262, second function E, negative 34. And you will get 
essentially the 1.48 times 10 to the 12th, which is what we got in this problem. So you could have those two separate calculations, but then you could actually combine them together. You could actually combine them together in a problem like this. So this kind of takes it to what I call the next level. You could actually write an equation for um, this step, but it's much easier just to do it in two steps. So what is the wavelength of light with an energy of 3.48 times 10 to the negative 18th joule? So you first need to recognize that you're dealing with two equations. I have energy here and energy is related to frequency, but I don't have a relationship to wavelength. But I do, if I find the uh, frequency, I could find the wavelength by taking uh, the speed of light and dividing it by the frequency. So what you have to do is first take energy and find your frequency and then divide that into the speed of light and get your wavelength. So again, pause the video, and then you're going to see the answer here. So as I said, the first step is to find your frequency, okay? Because I have energy. So I have a relationship between frequency and energy. I do not have a relationship between energy and wavelength, at least the way it's written at this point. So if I take my joules and divide it by my Planck's constant, I should get 5.25 times 10 to the 15th hertz. Again, that's an inverse seconds, same thing. So once I find my frequency, then I just got to divide that into the speed of light to find my wavelength. So again, I'm going to use three times 10 to the eighth, that is my um, speed of light, divided by my frequency that I just found in the previous problem. Again, plugging it correctly into your calculator, you should get 5.71 times 10 to the negative eighth. Again, I will show you this one more time, three times 10 to the eighth, divided by 5.25, second function E, 15, and you will get your final answer of 5.71 times 10 to the negative eighth meter. So if you could do a problem like this with the two steps, you could do pretty much any problem having to do with light.